The Israeli-Palestinian conflict has been the focal point of geopolitical instability in the Middle East since the establishment of Israel in 1948. Although the vast majority of the international community, the UN, and the United States publicly support a two-state solution to try and end this conflict, after decades of negotiation, the final settlement has never been reached. And tensions between the Jewish state and the Arab world continue to fester. Throughout this process, America has remained firmly behind Israel as its greatest supporter. In fact, Israel receives more U.S. foreign aid than any other country in the world. Now, much of this support has been attributed to a strong, wealthy, and very pro-Israeli lobby in America. Which is true, but you'd think that the majority of the strength behind this lobby would be the Jewish community in the U.S., which is only partially correct, because as it turns out, in terms of sheer numbers, the evangelical Christians from America's Bible Belt make up the majority of this lobby's power base. So we sent Thomas Morton to find out why a bunch of born-again Christians from Texas are so in love with the nation of Israel. This may be the most important prophetic spot in the entire Bible because the final act of the book of Revelation is going to begin right here at this place. The Bible teaches that Russia, Iran, Ethiopia, Libya, Turkey, and other nations will come down under a UN flag and they will invade Israel at this particular point. Can you imagine? Thousands of tanks out here in this valley, rumbling, fighting, firing. Can you imagine jet airplanes screaming overhead? The battle is going to be fierce. The horrific multinational fighting this preacher is describing is the Battle of Armageddon, which is supposed to happen right here, just as soon as Israel is a fully Jewish state which is why a bunch of Christians in Texas have become the most fervent Zionists on God's green earth. While most Americans probably think that the uh, pro-Israeli lobby is uh, largely a Jewish thing, actually the most of its support comes from right here in the Bible Belt, where evangelical Christians overwhelmingly believe that Israel has a right to exist because God said so. Go to the phone right now and call that number and say, yes, I'm going to stand with Israel. I'm going to bless the people of the Bible. I'm going to bless God's chosen people. Will those of you in this audience who support the state of Israel stand to your feet and give a shout of support? While a lot of Israel's financial support does come from Jewish wallets, there are close to 70 million evangelicals in America versus less than 14 million Jews worldwide. And given that roughly 80% of these Christians support Israel, that makes American Christians the largest pro-Israeli voting bloc in the world about four times the size of the Jewish community on Earth. There's a lot of money behind the Christian Zionist movement. Um, this church behind me, Cornerstone, is one of the biggest supporters of Israel, not just among Christians, but in the world. The pastor here, John Hagee, has raised an estimated $70 million over the course of his ministry. Pastor Hagee also founded Christians United for Israel, or KUFI, which is the largest pro-Israel lobbying organization in America even bigger than APAC, the organization most people assume dominates the American-Israel lobby because it's the biggest Jewish one. What's dicey about KUFI is that a good deal of their money for Israel is spent on buildings and organizations in the Israeli settlements. These are massive Jewish communities built well within Palestinian territory in violation of international law. The settlements are run by some of the most fanatical Zionists who believe the Bible entitles them to their land and that ceding any of it back to the Palestinians would be a violation of God's law. God gave them that land, they own that land. While there's nothing wrong with Christians supporting Israel, the way these Christians have chosen to do so puts them firmly on one side of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, one that's directly opposed to the U.S. government's official policy, and are using their massive political power and money to oppose the peace plan John Kerry is currently trying to push through. That's the two-state solution that would give the Palestinians the West Bank and Gaza Strip, and the Israelis would get the rest, hopefully ending all the violence. 